my name is Christian Ravensburg. I have to represent Thermo Scientific from Odense in Denmark. I'm here to talk about one of our software products called Protein Center and the analysis of it on Prodome and Transcriptome data set. So one of the challenges in today's proteomics is the ability to actually compare and analyze Prodome data set. But we found that our customers are not just using proteomics today to look at their biological systems. They're also interested in looking at the transcriptome. So the ability to quickly analyze both proteome and transcriptome data set is what this poster is about to showcase. So the method for doing this is our software solution called Protein Center. Now Protein Center is our proteomics software solution for analyzing proteon proteomics data set. It's based on a consolidated protein sequence and annotation database, allowing it to, uh, to fetch both protein sequences and biological annotation for all the major repositories that's available out there on the web. So it distills down to around 15 million protein sequences that are uniquely annotated to both pathway, enzymes, categorization, and also biological process and function in terms of gene ontology. That database allows us to do a very in-depth analysis of, of protein uh, data sets. Recently, we've upgraded Protein Center software to also allow us to analyze transcriptome data set. And that's something our customers has asked for. So that's the tool we've used in, in this study. Now, in order to showcase this software, we've looked at a data set coming from a recent publication uh, sequencing um, a HeLa cell line the aim of the paper was to showcase that, that you can actually characterize a full proteome of a HeLa cell line. Now, in the experiment that we used here, they characterized over 11,000 proteins. Now, interestingly enough, they didn't just use proteomics. They also used transcriptomics to characterize the transcriptome at the same time. And that's what we'll go through in this poster here. The first result sections describe this is the characterization of, of the proteome, the HeLa proteome. And as you can see, they analyzed over, over 10,000 proteins. Now, interestingly enough, we tried to find out how many pathways that are actually cover in the HeLa cell line. So, meaning functionally, did we actually cover the full cell line? And we can see out of the 251 pathways described for the human KEC database, we identified proteins for 242. So it's a reasonable, well-functional description of the human cell line. What you can see in figure two here is an overview of the different types of biological annotation that's associated with this data set and how it's displayed in Protein Center. One of the other interesting things that you can do with Protein Center today is the fact you can do pathway analysis. And as, a, as an ability to showcase this, we chose the nucleotide exclusion repair pathway um, this pathway was heavily presented in the data set that we analyzed here. Actually, 92% of that pathway was characterized in this data set. And you can see in this figure how Protein Center displays the components that were identified in the data set compared to those that are part of the pathway but not identified. Now, the interesting part we wanted to, to do here was to compare the proteome data set that they identified but also with the transcriptome data set. So first of all, we wanted to see, are there any significant difference in terms of the functions that the proteins they identified and the transcripts they identified carry out. In order to do so, we performed statistical enrichment analysis in terms of the pathways that were referring to the transcript and the proteins identified. And what you can see here is there's actually no statistical significant analysis between the protein and the transcript identified. There are, however, more proteins identified in the pathways than transcript. But that's due to the fact that a protein can persist in many different splice variants and thereby count multiple times in contrast to a transcript that will only be represented once in the KEK pathway. Next, we set up to, to look at was the lower bound in proteins in order to showcase how protein center can be used to identify whether there is a functional bias in the actual data set. So what we did here is out of the 10,000 proteins, uh, the scientists that published the data set we used to analyze in Protein Center, they also uh, characterized the absolute abundance of the proteins. So we picked out the 100 lowest abundant proteins from this data set, and we set out to find out are there any functional discrepancy amongst those compared to the whole human proteome. 
And what we found out is shown here in figure six, and it shows that there are an overrepresentation of proteins involved in signal transduction, which is what you would expect from analysis like that. The next figure that's shown here displays um, now the comparison between proteome and transcript data set, and in terms of the values of the transcript and proteins from the quantitative perspective. What you can see here is the proteins belonging to the 60S large ribosomal unit, and we try to map those proteins in terms of their pathway and then see are there any quantitative differentiation between the protein abundant measure and the transcript abundant measure. And the values are actually displayed in, in the heat map shown here on figure 7. Now there are not any significant differences, but it's, it gives a nice overview of how you can display quantitative data with protein center. It's not always enough to do gene ontology or pathway analysis when you want to come closer to the biological relevance of your data set. Not all biological systems are well described today. So a new feature that we've included in Protein Center is the ability to do what you could call protein-protein interaction analysis. And what that basically does is it relies on the string EMBL database to pull down protein-protein interactions that are well described. And then it uses a new plugin that's called Cytoscape to Protein Center to actually visualize those interactions. A showcase is seen here in figure eight. These are the mitochondrial ribosome proteins displayed. The gray ones are the proteins identified in the data set, where are the white ones? Those are ones that talk to those proteins but are not actually found in the data set. This allows one to find out what crosstalk is going on amongst the proteins that you're interested in. The last figure on this poster displays a nice plugin that is in Cytoscape, which allows to link pathway association to disease states. This is actually a cancer disease state that where proteins that are closely associated with cancer disease are colored yellow, and those that are not are colored red. So it gives you an idea about the proteins you identified and their relative association to a disease state. The conclusion of this poster is that we demonstrate with Protein Center it's possible to actually analyze both proteome and transcriptome data set, in, which enables us to fully characterize the biology of cells today. Secondly, we also demonstrate that mass spectrometry is able to characterize the full proteome of a single cell, which is very important for the biological analysis of proteomics. And lastly, we can actually recommend that the data set that was identified and analyzed in this poster can actually be used as a reference database to represent the, the healer cell line proteome. Thank you for watching this video. For more information, go to thermoscientific.com/asms.